A man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. The Apostle Paul also helps us to see the sacredness of marriage by comparing the relationship of a husband and wife to that of Christ and the church. Nolan, he says to husbands, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And Nolan, there is no greater love in all the world than the love Jesus demonstrated when he died on the cross for us. This is the way the Bible tells you you are to love far. And Nolan, if you will do that, it will bring more joy and fulfillment into your life than any other human relationship ever will. And Fawn, he says to wives, wives, submit yourself unto your husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Fawn, this means you are to walk by Nolan's side. You are to encourage him and support him and help him in every way. And you too, walking together and walking with the Lord, will find in this relationship the fulfillment and the completeness God intended from the beginning. Over the last couple of years, God has given me the opportunity to witness a beautiful bond, a bond that has been foundationally seated on the rock of Christ, one that is filled with much joy and contagious laughter, which is usually a result of Fawn's laugh. <laughs> if you ever spend time with Nolan and Fawn, the main takeaway you will likely have is that they're perfect for each other. Ten minutes won't go by without Nolan showing off one of his dance moves. <laughs> And Fawn, and, and Fawn returning with one of her big bear hugs. <laughs> That's just them. God has truly given them the best by giving them each other. Individually, I've got to witness Nolan grow into a strong and mighty man of God. His desire to pursue Christ and love people is what will make him an amazing husband. Moreover, Fawn is hands down one of the most joyous individuals that you will ever meet. God has given her, her the ability to make friends with anybody within her vicinity. I've also got to witness Fonda grow into a strong and mighty woman of God. And together, Fonda and Nolan will cultivate a beautiful marriage that will last a lifetime for God's glory. For it is and forever will be Jesus, the love that you guys have for him and the love that he has for you, that will grow you, keep you, and sustain you. Jesus further expresses his great love for us in 1 John chapter 4, 7 through 19, which reads, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not know God does not, know, does not love because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he first loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so, we know, whoever lives in love, in God, in God in them, this is how love is made complete among us. In this, in this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. In Jesus' last few moments on earth, we find him performing a simple act of washing his disciples' feet. He reveals not only his true character, but the character he wants all believers to develop. Jesus' act of humility teaches us so much and is so critical to the life of a Christian that he commands all those who follow him to do the same. Nolan and Fawn will now take this example and participate in the act of washing each other's feet. This act will serve as a symbol of their desire to follow Christ's example of sacrificial love and commitment to one another.
This time, Nolan and Fawn would like to share their personal vows with each other. Nolan, will you please share your vows with Fawn? Fawn, uh, when I first moved to Grand Island for work, uh, my first thought was, when is the soonest I can move back east to Lincoln or Omaha? <laughs> I was told that I would probably make some friends, even find a girl that might tie me down to the area. And I was like, nah, <laughs> Grand Island? I don't think so. And how wrong was I? Kind of. <laughs> but I mean, we're, we're living back in Omaha now, so. <laughs> Clearly God had another plan for our lives. And how thankful uh, am I that he was involved. Fawn, I love you so much. And sometimes when you tell me that you love me, I'm left speechless. 
not because I don't love you back, of course, but because I don't know or have the words to express my feelings for you. Nothing seems adequate. So I'm just left looking back at you with the biggest, dopiest look of love that I can muster. <laughs> but I'm going to try to do my best to describe my feelings to you. Fawn, you are such a blessing. And I'm so happy and thankful that you have chosen me as I have chosen you. I love your kindness. I love your joyful exuberance. I love your heart. I love how we try new things together and push each other out of our comfort zones. And how we both express our sacrificial love for each other. And I love how you can go skydiving with me sometimes. <laughs> Sorry, Jam Chip. <laughs> but mostly I love how much we've grown together as a couple and as a couple in our faith. I cannot wait to continue to grow with you and to make memories together. I'm so excited to celebrate your wins and encourage you when you are struggling. And I can't wait to be on your forever team. So my lovely Fani, in front of our family and friends here in person and those support us, from their homes. Can you believe it? I know. <laughs> it's happening. We're getting married. <laughs> Bob, will you please share your vows with Nolan? I started reading the Bible when I was a little girl, and I remember reading about husbands and wives in Ephesians 5.22. Dom already shared a little bit of it, but it says... Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. I was a very stubborn and independent little girl. And submitting to anyone was not a strength of mine, as my parents could probably tell you. I couldn't fathom submitting to any man, even into adulthood. And then I met you. And you made it so easy for me. Knowing you reflect Jesus in so many ways. You are so kind and incredibly patient <laughs> and compassionate for all people. You build people up. You are intuitive, encouraging, strong, meek, just, loyal, and the most humble man I have ever met. I could not submit to anyone else. So Nolan Austin Field, like the church submits to Christ, I choose to submit myself to you. And I vow to choose you every day. I vow to stand beside you and fight against discouragement, temptation, loss, poverty, sickness, and whatever else comes our way. I vow to rejoice with you in all the blessings God gives us. I vow to help you succeed in your goals and rise up with you to be your encourager, co-leader, best friend, and closest confidant. I vow to respect your leadership and guidance in our family. I vow to love you faithfully through the good and bad every single day for the rest of our lives. And I vow to always seek Christ with you, to study his word with you, and to keep God at the center of our marriage. I give you my hand, my heart, my love from this day forward as long as we both shall live. Nolan, will you take Fawn to be your wife? Will you commit yourself to her happiness and her self-fulfillment as a person and to her usefulness in God's kingdom? And will you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve her in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and be true and loyal to her so long as you both shall live? I do. Fawn, will you take Nolan to be your husband? Will you commit yourself to his happiness and his self-fulfillment as a person and to his usefulness in God's kingdom? And will you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve him in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and be true and loyal to him so long as you both shall live? I do. God has given us the power of symbols to communicate deep truths about himself and the world around us. The ring is a circle that does not end. God communicates his unending love for us through the ring. He even used the rainbow to symbolize his covenant after the world was flooded. 
Most people think that the rainbow is an arc, but it's actually a full circle that sits above the earth. Our view is cut in half by the horizon. God's covenant is a never ending covenant and circle of faithfulness. His love and commitment is infinite. And it is through his power that Nolan and Fawn will symbolize their love for each other with the exchanging of their rings. Nolan, will you give Fawn the ring as a token of your love and repeat after me? Fawn, with this ring. Fawn, with this ring. I pledge my life and my love to you. I pledge my life and my love to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Fawn, will you give Nolan the ring as a token of your love and repeat after me? Nolan, with this ring. Nolan, with this ring. I pledge my life and my love to you. I pledge my life and my love to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Since Nolan and Fawn have made these commitments before God and all of these witnesses, by the authority of God and the laws of the state of Nebraska, I declare you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no man tear apart. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you for the first time ever, Mr. and Mrs. Nolan and Fawnfield. Good. 